Okay. Oil. Excuse me. Hopefully I've set this camera right this time. Last look I said to Sandy, I'm I'm no videographer, but hopefully by the end of the year um, I'll have got this a lot more streamlined um, and you know I've got the process down. As you can see it's it's cold in here and I think it's trying to focus on the smoke. Sorry to uh, keep looking at the screen. It keep, I don't know what's happening with this but the monitor display goes off so I've, anyway so the first um, thing that I'd like to discuss with you is, is um, some of the questions and answers and, and what I would like to say about this is that this is fantastic um, it gives me an incentive to do more videos and um, I, I do genuinely love to help if I can so the first one was um, Lee excuse me while well, I'm reading the paper Lee, um, where do you get your carboy bits or where can I get a carboy bit for screwing up your scales and stuff like that? Um, what I will say is if you go to any place that sell Dremel bits, maybe Amazon, if you're in the States, Lowe's, Home Depot, I would have thought we'll definitely stock these kind of items and that's where you'll pick your um, the item that you need from up from. They, they do plenty, you can buy them in little packs with different shapes and sizes, no problem. The next one was Lee. I'm having a lot of trouble with kydex sheaths and um, you know getting the edges nice and, and all that. So when I do the next batch of field masters, what I'll do is I'll do a video on uh, making the sheaths or one of the sheaths, and I'll show you how I go about doing the retention, and I'll show you how I go about sorting out the sheaths, the edges, and all that type of stuff. No problem. The next one is there any way to recess steel slash titanium? with a drill press yes and no um, it's not ideal to do it on a drill press and what he also says is by using a carboy bit um, you don't get a completely flat bottom which is right in a sense but when you're making frame locks I mean it's only very small what you do is you recess the bearings in what they call a raceway and I will show you how I made a tool to do that and how I go about doing that which eradicates any problem with that completely because it just sets them level obviously um, but you can, the other way I do it, and I do it a lot this way now, is I'll just stick them on my rotary table and I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll bore it out. Um, you know, you can also bore it down and do it that way, which will give you a perfectly flat way, but the, the carboid bits do a fine job as long as you recess them bearings in and make your own waste way with the bearings, which I'll, I'll do a video and I'll show you how I do that. Um, can you do it on the drill press? Yes. Is it putting a lot of pressure on the drill press? Probably, but it's still doable. And maybe if I get a chance, I'll do a video on that with my little drill press and I'll show you how it's done. Because um, my big one's just dedicated for tapping. Okay. Um, finishing and polishing stabilised wood. Well, I've got a, a knife here. Um, the, that's got, you know, quite intricate and elaborate dovetails on with uh, this is Croatian wood a uh, Croatian olive wood a different type of olive wood from a different olive wood from a different place this time with carbon fibre bolsters uh, hope you can see that okay so maybe I'll show you when I do that um, the other one is Liam I'm having real trouble getting my scales flat how do you do that on your surface plate, your marble surface plate or, a, or my metal one? Well in a minute I'll end the video, I'll take you over there and I'll show you how I go about putting the paper down. Make sure the paper is nice and flat. Um, and it's easy to keep changing the paper over because there's a product that I use that makes it very simple. As I do with, well I'll, I'll either insert a picture or I'll flash a picture. I use the same procedure for my disc sander. Um, now what I will say is... The stuff that I use is not very easy to get in, in the UK, which a lot of this type of stuff is not for us in the UK, to be honest. Um, but for in the States, it's not a problem. Um, same as the lapping compound <coughs> that I use for my pivots and stuff, it's not easy. You know, luckily I've got real good mates, thanks Dan, in the States that really help me out. If I get stuck and I need something, they get it for me and they'll send it over. So I'm lucky in that way. But... Um, I suppose if you're friends with anybody in the States, you know, they'll do the same. Um, okay, so 
but that's about it for these questions. I hope they keep coming and I'll do what I can. I, I enjoy helping um, as much as I can. <coughs> There'll always be stuff that I'll keep close to my heart. At the end of the day, this is not my hobby. Um, you, you, you know, this is what's going to put food in my kids' bellies and, um, you know, for people that are doing it, you know, it's just a hobby, you know, and it's not so bad, but for me, um, you know, it's, this, this is what I do, so, um, but I'll help as much as I can. I do enjoy, you, you know, helping. I have got some leather videos coming up, so I get an awful lot of emails. There's a thing that I'll probably sit down with in a bit and discuss that I get an awful lot of emails about, Leon, the um, new knife maker up and coming, how do you get successful or you, that type of stuff. Um, you know, what should I do, how do you go about it, and all that type of stuff. And that's a video in its own right. So I'm going to do that too. Um, okay, so I'll bring you back in a minute. Okay. Okay, guys. Um, so, this is the stuff that I use. It's 3M Feathering Disc Adhesive Type 2. Um, and what it does is it allows you to take stuff off and put new stuff on. I've just took, taken that off. This lasts for quite a while, there's about, about 10 pieces before you really have to reapply it. Like I say, I use it for um, my disc sander 2. Um, it goes straight on and you're away basically. Like it's, oh, it's, it's on there now, it's not going nowhere, it's extremely flat. Take a piece of wood, this is just a piece that I've got a uh, piece of walnut, make a hatch pat, uh, pattern as you can see, I hope, and um, what you want to do then is basically a figure of eight. I find if you go like, up and down like this, it will tend to round these edges off. And also what you want to be doing is don't be pressing your hand down that way or that way, just the weight of your hand. And then what you want to be doing is starting a slow figure of eight and then move back and then check. Now I can see here I'm already putting pressure here or this is fatter here than it is there. So what I'll do now is apply a little bit of pressure there and it's already starting to disappear there. Slowly going, round in circles, figure of eight, round in circles, figure of eight, nearly, and I'm not putting much pressure on here at all, you want to try and get this flat first with your grinder, if not, Go really aggressive on the sandpaper till you get it something like, and then when you come to sort it out, like all them have gone now, reapply your marks again, like a hatch pa pattern, so you can see. And then you'll find now this will just do it. There you go, it's doing it evenly. See how it's all. Going away evenly. Gone. And then what I use, um, this is a, an engineer's straight edge, a true proper straight edge. And then I'll put it onto there, as you I can see from here, but it, then I'll hold it up to the light and see if there's any gaps. I hope that helps guys. I hope I hope that helps quite a bit and uh, I hope that answers some questions and I hope that helps you out mate and you know if you follow my procedure you'll have wood as flat as that. Okay, that's really flat. Like I showed in one of my previous videos you can rub two pieces together and you know they're that flat sometimes they'll stick together and then and then just drop. That's really flat now that's you know fresh piece of sandpaper as well is what you want. Don't use stuff like this because what will happen is that grit's worn away there, that grit's worn away there and it's still quite of aggressive there. So what will happen is as you use a worn piece, you'll, you'll do this 
and that because it's more aggressive than that will just keep eating this away quicker than it's eating them two away and you'll be forever chasing it and you'll never get there um, so okay I hope that helps uh, like I say any more drop it down in the comments box and I'll try and help take care all bye for now